And it's a story about Miles who finds this dog and finds this woman in the same time period and it really changes his perspective on the world and, uh, and seeing how those relationships grow over time. It's the first time that I've ever been good friends before shooting uh, with the director that I've worked with. So that was something kind of unique uh, that was a lot of fun. And it's a super collaborative process. He's the writer and the director. So there's a lot of leeway with um, lines and trying to tell the story as best as we can. I love what she's brought to the character and just the energy and the vibe she brings to set every day. And she's super fun to work with and super smart and, and has a lot of interesting uh, inputs through the story and the character and, and uh, yeah, we got super lucky. <laughs> Alex and I have gotten to be pretty good friends, so uh, we have that trust um, and we kind of can let it all out through the scene and uh, it's a lot of fun to like work with somebody you're really close with because you're so comfortable around them. I see through him that he's really just a sweet uh, animal and uh, I don't think that Miles really has any in intentions of harm or, or bad and he only sees kind of the goodness um, in him so once that gets exposed Axel sees the same through him and it kind of clicks. As an actor there's absolutely nothing better than having a full life-size puppet of him because you can see the whole scale of him and uh, you can get up close with him and you can touch him and you can feel him and you can feel his response and if you got if you slap him here there's a guy that's right here that's controlling him that's going to move this way so you have direct reaction to what he's doing at all times his ears go up his eyes move um, it's I mean it's like a dream come true to be able to like work with that we have a super close relationship but at times we don't really understand each other and there's a, a he thinks he knows what's best for me and I think I know what's best for me. So there's kind of that dynamic playing, uh, just like a lot of father and sons. It's been really fun to work with him. He's super smart and uh, he's such a character that it's cool to hear his stories and it's cool to talk to him. I love it and I've become a fan of it and I watch Supercross every weekend. So it's, uh, it's really enjoyable for me. So yeah, it was awesome to, to be a part of that. And, be able to film it all and to be able to show people what this world's like and and uh, what these guys do. Miles is a quiet and focused kid and um, this is kind of his sole uh, passion and this is all he's ever known. He's grown up with being a writer in, in, in the motocross world. Um, so it's really it's all he knows, it's all he's ever done and he's more comfortable around bikes and machines than he is around other people, just in general, it's whether it be school or, or anything else. So when he meets Axel, it, it's kind of a familiar ground for him. And that's how he's so open to him at first. And then he also finds that human element of Axel too. And that really opens him up. And I, I think it opens him up um, for letting Sarah into his life. And um, it really helps him kind of push uh, personally to be able to, you know, eventually fall in love with her. If there's something that all ages are going to be able to relate to with this movie, um, whether it be the motocross world or the love story or the relationship between a boy and his dog. And, and that's what I think is so unique about this. It has so many elements that combine together in this great story. Sarah is pretty badass, if you ask me. I think she can hold her own. She's very strong. Growing up, it was just her and her mom. They take on a lot the responsibility of taking care of another family and all of their luxurious belongings that come with that. And on top of that, their family, which is a little bit of a broken home. And I think Sarah tries to avoid that. You know, she's like, that doesn't affect me. But when she meets, Miles, I think, is like the first time she starts to really acknowledge who she really is. Miles' first impression of Sarah is that she has it all. She's connected to the Fontaines, and little does he know that she feels like a guest in her own home. Miles and Sarah have this really deep breakthrough con conversation, 
he starts to see that she is down to earth and that she does have, you know, some issues that she's dealing with just like he is. It's not just a robot who's doing things that he's supposed to be told. This is a one of a kind situation where he has a heart, you know, not literally, but inside of him somewhere he knows right from wrong and he has a soul. One of my favorite m moments in the movie is when Sarah brings uh, Axel and Miles to her little getaway, her escape, right? The graffiti ruins. And this is somewhere where she goes and kind of puts it all out, you know, literally through the spray can, through her art. And when Axel connects to that, I think that's when they really kind of connect on another level. He's not just Alex's toy. Axel is a very special character and being able to actually work with him and not the visual affects him, pretending that he's there is very helpful for us actors um, to be able to actually touch him and look at him in the eyes and things from his eyes changing color to his ears. It's something really incredible to be a part of. Uh, every step of the way, Oliver has been there, my castmates have been there, and every decision has been made together. Everybody, It's been very collaborative, which is something really special. Something that people may not know about this film is I didn't have my license until I got the role of Sarah. And it was only because in the script it said that Sarah drives this massive Fontaine truck, Sam's, you know, one of the Fontaine's trucks. And I was like, mm, I mean, I know how to drive, you know, but like the pressure of like it having to be right in the exact spot or like swooping in, like, am I gonna be able to do that? Like, I don't know, the pressure is gonna be on. It's a very special character, very close to my heart because I feel like I kind of helped develop her. So uh, that's why they should go watch it because they'll get a little part of my heart in it. He has everything, he has these friends, he has the, all these, you know, these material, the wealth, you know, he's got whatever he wants, you know, video games, dirt bikes, you know, anything. And, um, but it's pretty lonely because, you know, they're all kind of around just, for that, you know, for the money, for the, for the, for the popularity and all that. Sam is kind of, you know, the, you know, the, the bully or the antagonist, you know, throughout to Miles. He's kind of like the nemesis, but in a way it's kind of that whole keep your friends close and your enemies even closer kind of thing for both of them. And um, so he kind of comes off as, you know, as maybe he's just, you know, kind of a rough around the edges kind of guy. And maybe he's like, you know, a nice guy. Sam is very envious, you know among other things. And then when Sarah, you know, falls for Miles and, you know, just completely tears him apart because that's, you know, one thing that he can't have. He can't just put money down and, and get Sarah. Alex is great. Um, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to, 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 you know, be a bully to somebody like that, you know, because he's such a great guy and he's like, you know, really, really nice kid. Um, but he's also, he's, he's a true professional and, you know, it's, it's been a joy. It's been a complete pleasure. But, um, He's a, he's a sports guy, he's competitive, and so it's funny when we do the scenes or when we're shooting at the racetrack and stuff, you can tell he's getting in the zone and he's, you know, takes it very seriously. Ollie's great, Ollie, uh, this is obviously his first project, you know, writing, directing, um, and he's, he's been doing outstanding and he's got such a great crew around him, um, a bunch of vets of the industry, so it's really great, it's fun to see that everybody work. Most challenging thing? Uh, I, I wanted to do as as much uh, as many of my stunts as I could do, you know, um, just just because, you know, because it's yeah, it's fun, exciting. It's a nice little nice little ride, you know. Um, so you know, it's coming of age, and you know the the bond between you know a boy and and his you know best friend, you know this this robot dog, who we all wish we had a robot dog <laughs> growing up. You didn't expect to find a young man who uh, ultimately. Um, befriends it and they kind of discover something new within each other which allows them to discover something new within them within themselves. Axel is a, a robotic dog um, and but not just a robotic dog it's artificial intelligence as well. Um, it is probably the latest development of of artificial intelligence technology and the idea behind it is it's supposed to get smarter with every moment it stays in human contact. And the irony in that is, is in order, the only way Andrick sees that is when it escapes his lab and falls into the hands of a young man. If there's anyone who could probably challenge 
Andrik, it's Randall. And that's why Randall's there, because Andrik realizes if anyone's going to tell me that I'm wrong, it's going to be this guy, because he probably knows it better than I do. Alex has been absolutely lovely, and uh, uh, I've really enjoyed working with him. Very receptive, um, very giving, very generous, and very curious, um, which has also made my work feel more curious. And I guess there is this level of um, vibrancy to what they do. The joy for me in being a part of this film is honestly boils down to just working with a great cast and crew. Just um, really kind and collaborative and, and generous group of people who haven't skipped a beat in, in showing respect and camaraderie and, and efficiency in trying to make something work. It's a feel-good story, you know, and, and you know, it, it, it kind of that story of not giving up and, and being hopeful and, and, and trusting the, all the good in the world, because there's lots of it. He's got a really good look and a uh, very committed actor and was a pleasure to work with. And he was really, he was really worth waiting for in our minds. He was very, very special. And Becky G, um, we, had, we had met a lot of different women and we had heard about her. She had just finished Power Rangers and we, uh, we met her and we thought she was just delightful and that the two of them together had a real spark. The live action pu puppet always helps the cast because they can interact with something as opposed to interacting with a green screen. You know, so they know what they were playing off of and they could see the, the animal move and they could respond to the animal's movements. So that always works better. The Axel we meet is a, a puppy, for lack of a better description. It really doesn't know much about the world, doesn't know its purpose, doesn't really know who its enemies are and who its friends are. And of the course, the picture learns all those things. It also was brilliant because it allowed the actors to interact with something that not only looked real and was the right size, but it was emoting because of the way that the puppeteers were, were able to uh, do their do their job, that was they gave the actor something to act against, uh, which was quite great. So the net result is anything that you see in the picture, for the most part, that is, you know, head and shoulders relatively tight. That's the puppet. It's very much a um, not a, I guess a teen romance of some sort, which is quite sweet. The the, the actors are terrific together, really great energy. But at the same time, it has this science fiction component, you know, this dog that can, you know, obviously science right now is moving in the direction of Axel. As far as I know, nothing nearly as complicated uh, or com complex as Axel exists. So you have that component as well. So to mix genres, to get something, I think, really quite unique is, uh, um, is you know, is one of the wonderful things about this movie. Rendell's going nuts because the, uh, Axel is, is gone and he's torn out of you know, the compartment that he was kept in. So now we don't know where he is. Um, we, he could be anywhere. He could be 100 miles from here. So I'm in a pretty intense state of shock and trying to figure out where this guy is with Andrew. What goes wrong is that we programmed him too well. And he has AI technology as the ability to learn. So Axel starts learning on his own after escaping on his own. And now he's writing his own code. And we can't control it. I love working with writer directors, and Oliver, you know, this is his baby from the inception. So it's it's pretty cool to work with somebody who can make the decisions on the spot as to whether a line is going to be changed or whether we need that line anymore. It's just very quick. He's very collaborative. Almost every single idea that I, you know, threw in there, threw at him, he allowed me to at least try one in the story. So I think we we work really well together, and it's really fun to uh, to be you know on his team. What the film says about artificial intelligence, for sure, is that it's not controllable. It's going to be something that is completely out of hand almost at its conception. Once it begins, it's, it, we're not going to be able to be as smart as it or to control where it goes or what it does or how much it knows or what it decides to do. So I think that's kind of the scariest. It looks so cool. I'm so glad that they did a puppetry and used people instead of uh, completely visual effects CGI animation because it adds a texture to the whole thing. You can't go wrong making a movie about like motocross. I, I drive a motorcycle so I feel like it's so fun to watch that and kids, you know, like whenever I, I'm on my motorcycle and a kid passes by, they always just stare you down because they're like, that is the coolest looking thing I've ever seen. I want to be in that uniform, I want a helmet and I want to get a <laughs> yeah. 
So like to make a movie about that for kids is just so intriguing and fun. And then on top of that, to create a sci-fi intelligent military dog that's also a companion and a protector is cool to me. It was a story about a dirt bike rider who finds this incredibly powerful and dangerous robot when he's stranded out in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's a story about doing the right thing when you have a great responsibility of, of something that is extremely powerful and dangerous. I um, initially did the short just with a CGI character, but I knew in the feature I wanted to use a practical animatronic puppet. I wanted the actors to have that experience of working with something that's on set. I wanted uh, to bring back that kind of craft to this genre um, and not get too lost in a fully CGI experience. We were looking for times uh, when Axel was uh, behaving more like a machine with a mission versus when he was interacting with humans and we tried to get him to behave in a more lifelike fashion over the course of the narrative. He starts out as, uh, you know, a puppy but also as a more primitive machine and he ends as a soulful dog. He's somebody that is sort of facing the challenges of adulthood for the first time, you know, realizing that there are people that have advantages that he doesn't have. Uh, he is without a mother. Uh, his father, um, he's realizing, has his own life in a way and is supportive of him. But it's now really sort of up to Miles to kind of start making choices. Miles is, in a way, stunted by having his head so down and focusing on, you know, trying to get past that finish line. Uh, and I think that this encounter with this being with Axel is what kind of opens up his heart. Sarah, in a way, is the hero of the story. She's the one that rescues Miles. She's the one that urges Miles to do the right thing. Sarah, um, you know, not mu not nobody's expecting much for her yet she has this incredible talent as an artist um she has uh this incredible bravery and she isn't really able to share that with anyone at the beginning of the story and it's miles who takes an interest in that and um i think that's what draws them together in a way is they both are outsiders um in this world he was really wanted to talk with me about the character and and be involved in it and uh in in the vision of the movie, and he uh, he brought just such a wonderful sense of humor to the character, uh, but also a real soulfulness. It's truly a dream come true for me, um, and and I mean I'm good for the rest of my life if if I just get one. Honestly, this is just just amazing. So I I mostly just am humbled when I when I see just the incredible work and talent and art that's gone into an idea I had many years ago that I just decided I was going to pursue, you know, and, and, and the fact that it's taken off a life of its own and, and now that it's, it's a separate thing from myself or it used to just be an extension of myself, used to be part of me, is, is amazing. I hope they go home and give their dog a kiss, you know, I mean, that would be great. Uh, I... I, I hope they they have a heart opening experience that uh, that they can talk about with one another. I hope they can think about it after they see it and they want to rewatch it. I, I hope that uh, you know people have a really good time and feel like they they spent their ticket money and their popcorn money and a good thing. He's also an artificially intelligent creature, so um, when he escapes from the facility and goes out into the world, he actually starts learning stuff that he's not supposed to learn. The Miles character in the beginning of the movie, he races dirt bikes, but he's not sure what he wants to do. The only reason he races dirt bikes is because he's not good at anything else. And over the course of the movie, he acquires much more of a sense of what's really important about uh, life and his life. The Sarah character has gotten out from under the thumb of the oppressive, uh, rich family that they're basically indentured servants to. She gets out from under that. The real meat of the story is the two of them together. And they're fantastic together. Alex and Becky did an amazing job. 
uh, and their chemistry on screen is is great. Miles built his own motorcycle and is constantly, if something breaks, he has to fix it himself. Therefore, he's very mechanically inclined, which comes in handy when you have a broken military robot that needs to be repaired. It, it, it makes it much more credible that he would actually be able to figure out how to repair the dog, which is a critical part of the bonding of the two of them. We staged an actual real race. We did it over and over and over again, and uh, we would do it in sections so that people would all take off hellbent for leather, and then 15 seconds later, all right, stop, 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 stop. That was a bit weird for them. But other than the fact that we had to, to go through the normal step-by-step -step process of making a movie, this was a real race. This is a story of a boy and his robotic dog and the girl that he meets and the two of them uh, realizing that they're kindred souls and the part of what draws them together is their relationship to this robotic dog. I hope that that's what people are, are, are reacting to. This movie with the military robots, the motocross, which represents passion and the, the, uh, and the, the good side of technology, how you can use technology to, to be creative and be passionate and be skillful. Um, and then the bad side of technology, which is military robots that kill you. And we had a great motocross day where we really got to race and watch the kids who are, you know, who really live out there and do this thing and they're great at it. And we got to watch them kick some ass and that was really fun. He is a sincere, smart, articulate young man. And, uh, and he, um, you know, wasn't a, a fake know-it-all. You know, he was he's, he was always sincere and, and and pretty smart. So it was it was it was nice working with him. The story is about a boy and a dog, and it's about a boy finding a dog that needs his attention and care, and the uh, reciprocity that develops between the two. In this case, the dog is a robot uh, developed by the uh, military contractors uh, to fight wars, uh, but. At, at the heart of this story, it's, it's, uh, it's a boy and his dog. He's an excellent actor, he's magnetic, he's handsome, and he's a good person. It's an uplifting uh, movie, and uh, I hope that they uh, uh, enjoy a, a clean movie with a, with a good moral foundation and uh, with, nice, with nice lead actors.